I hate a lot of things. Fruits, colours, and above all, women. during the next six weeks. While they're still guiding tourists through it, the Evanston Power Project is an enormous thing. Four huge nuclear reactors surrounded by the biggest turbines and generators in the world. The power is fed into the power grid, which supplies the entire Great Lakes region with power. <laughs> Before the Evanston project went into operation two months ago, the whole Midwest was suffering from a severe power shortage. If we can take out the new power plant, things will be even worse than they were before. <laughs> if we succeed, things will be so much worse even than they are now. Go with God, my friend. I hope you can make things much, much worse. But the government has thought about the consequences of losing the Evans Evanston project. Just saying it so many times. And the security there is pretty formidable. Security where? Um, I'm not sure, I don't know. If only he was more clear and yeah. succinct on where it is that he's discussing. <laughs> so Revolutionary Command asked me to tour the place and come up with some unconventional ideas, which I have done, but there are still several tough problems to be solved. Jesus, he's fucking so bad at this. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. All I'll say is 90% of this book will have been cut out, yeah. and you are very welcome. <laughs> some of the weaknesses are really quite astounding. Most astounding of all is the government's decision to let tourists into the place. The reason for that decision, I am sure, is contrived by the author to allow for this attack to take place at all. The reason for that decision, I am sure, is the big fuss the anti-nuclear crazies have been making about the plant. The anti-nuclear crazies. What do they think's gonna happen? A terrorist blow the place up? Idiots. <laughs> what really interested me, though, was that one old gentleman in my group was carrying a cane with a metal head, and the guards let him keep it during the tour. In essence, my idea is this. Since there is no way a single tourist can sneak in enough explosive material to wreck the place, nor any way he can position the small amount he could sneak in so it would really be effective, like punching a hole in one of the reactor pressure mm. vessels, Jesus, this, uh, this sentence is just never end. <laughs> Since there is no way a single tourist can sneak in enough explosive material to wreck the place, nor any way he can position the small amount he could sneak in so it would be really effective, like punching a hole in one of the reactor pressure vessels, we may as well forget about the explosives. Instead, we'll try to contaminate the plant with radioactive material so that it can't be used. We can easily pack enough of a really hot and nasty radionuclide something with a half-life of a year or so into a cane or a crutch together with a small explosive of charge for dispersing it to make the entire Evanston power project uninhabitable. Unfortunately, this will be a suicide mission. Whoever carries the radioactive material into the plant will already have been exposed to a lethal dose of radiation before he gets into the plant gate with it. The biggest worry is the radiation detectors which are all over the plant. If one of those gets a whiff of our man before he's ready to do his thing, it could get sticky. <laughs> I find it funny he's already distancing himself from the guy that's going to do yeah. it when this was his suicide mission. Yeah, I, I thought... He was like, whichever one of the guys I yeah. pick is going to die yeah. for this. You know? But you, you have <laughs> to do it. That's you, you to have do it, to right? do the suicide mission because of the fucking... Yeah. The order. The order. Orders order. from the order. Yeah, yeah. The whole plan is pretty scary, but it has one big advantage. It's so 
dumb, they'll never <laughs> see it coming. I must confess that I'm glad at this point that my probationary period still has 11 months to run, and that I won't be asked to volunteer for this particular mission. So this isn't even his suicide mission, because he's just gonna what? give it to someone else. What? 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 Fuck, but how, I thought- How does that make any sense? Why even have the whole suicide mission thing? If he's then gonna come up with a suicide mission of his own, yeah. and then and not yeah, have yeah. him do it. What the fuck? April 20, 1993. A day of rest and peace after a hectic week. Catherine and I drove to the mountains early this morning and spent the day walking in the woods. It was cool and bright and clear. After a picnic lunch, we made love in a little meadow under the open sky. Aww. Oh, isn't that nice for you? Yeah. Isn't Nazi nice? Roman. Yeah. Murderers. <laughs> out and out. Yeah. Fucking vicious murdering bastards. Yeah. Well, hopefully that's the last peaceful day the yeah. world ever sees, eh? Yeah. Oh, I, we were out in nature and yeah. we walked through the woods and we literally... It gave us no perspective. No. <laughs> we talked of many things. Racism, for example. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mostly it was just yeah. racism. I say many things, it was pretty much just different <laughs> types of racism. As we were driving home that evening, we heard the news on the radio which capped a perfect day. The organisation hit the Israeli embassy in Washington this afternoon. For months, an Israeli murder squad, you're a murder yeah. squad, working out of their embassy had been picking off our people around the country. Today we settled the score. A number of Israeli officials had flown in for the occasion, and there must have been more than 300 people in the embassy when our 4.2 inch mortars began raining TNT and phosphorus <laughs> onto their heads through the roof. Jesus Christ. Nice little walk in the woods there. Yeah, capped off a perfect yeah. day. One fascinating incident in the news story, which the censor somehow failed to cut before it was broadcast, conveniently, was the murder of a group of tourists by an embassy guard. During the attack, an Israeli came running out of the crumbling building with a submachine gun his clothes in flames. He spotted a group of a dozen tourists, all women and small children. <laughs> <laughs> all women what are small the fuck? Like, how fucking dumb can you be, dude? Like, these are the, just the laziest, most pathetic yeah. shit I've ever heard. It is, it's pathetic. It's that level of pathetic where it's just wretched. <laughs> it's like, put it out of its misery. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, that is unreal. They blow up a bunch of Israelis and then yeah. one of them just comes sprinting out of the fire and just yeah. machine guns a bunch of children. <laughs> It's like, like, can you imagine that in a film? <laughs> yeah, but like, it, the, the nonsense of yeah, having, yeah, having yeah. to try and wrap your yeah. head about why that yeah. just happened. But it's utterly ridiculous, yeah. it's utterly absurd yeah. and yeah. fucking stupid. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. It just totally feels like satire at points. It's yeah. that dumb, and yet this guy is deadly serious. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you would think that that was from fucking Sleeping yeah. Giant or something, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. He spotted a group of a dozen tourists, all women <laughs> and small children, gawking at the scene of destruction from across the street, shrieking out his hatred in guttural Hebrew, the Jew opened fire on them, <laughs> killing nine on the spot and critically wounding three others. Of course, he was not charged by the police. <laughs> Your day is coming, Jews. Your day is coming. So did, He's just gone fucking yeah, completely did, mad Is he even point. going to attempt to explain why the man did that? No. I should be going to bed early tonight in order to be ready for a long day tomorrow. But the excitement of our achievement this afternoon makes it impossible for me to sleep yet. The organisation has demonstrated once again what an incomparable weapon the mortar is for guerrilla warfare. He really loves mortars, doesn't yeah, he? This is like five-star Yelp review for yeah. this endorsement. Yeah. I imagine like a billboard for mortars yeah, with yeah, William yeah. Luther Pierce's endorsement and his smiling face. Once a 4.2 Incher is zeroed in and firmly seated, it will deliver rounds with sufficient accuracy and low enough trajectory that we will have an excellent hit probability on the side of the generator building facing the shore, which is practically one huge window, ten stories high and more than 200 yards wide. <laughs> Sorry, 4.2 inches. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. William Luther Pierce's flaming hot 4.2 inches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah, I bet he had a tiny penis. Yeah. I bet it inexplicably screamed. Whenever <laughs> <laughs> he, he dropped his trousers, it just started screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Each 
day on TV it gets worse, with more and more of the old gas chamber propaganda that has worked so well for them in the past. Here we go, so he finally, he finally yeah. got to it, it yeah. took him a while, he yeah. felt comfortable, he finally just denied the Holocaust. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is it, is it appropriate to have a klaxon blare and a, do a little <laughs> blind drunk celebration for Holocaust oh, denial? Yeah, yeah. the <laughs> Holocaust <laughs> denial klaxon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, mm. uh, maybe if we all just imagine it in our heads. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that was highly inappropriate. Yeah, I should never have done that, no. yeah, I think that's the first, right? That's got to be the first. Uh, it's the full yeah, blown yeah. Holocaust. <laughs> yeah, it is. One unexpected benefit to us from the embassy action has been a major quarrel between the blacks and their Jewish patrons. They have long resented the high handed way in which the Jews manipulate and exploit the entire equality movement. But why is he putting that in inverted commas? Like, because there's no such thing as equality. Because oh. to equalise yeah, the races yeah. is inequality. Yeah, I really wish I hadn't asked. Yep. <laughs> of course, also, they don't really want equality. They want to rule the world. Yeah. So it's, regardless of how you look at it from an artist's perspective, yeah, yeah. it's fake and bullshit yeah. regardless. Which culminated Saturday in the Jews' number one house n The nominal chairman of the National Association of Human Relations Councils. You are going to bleep that, right? No. <laughs> Only when I say it. <laughs> say it, I really say it. May 6. It used to be that most of our new weapons were smuggled off military bases one at a time by our own people who were stationed there. But lately we've switched to hiring black service personnel to hijack the stuff for us by the truckload. For enough money they'll walk off with the whole base for us. They just have to share some of the money we give them with a few of their soul brothers on guard duty. <laughs> the fact that he's like now laying the blame yeah. for the like Nazi takeover of America on black people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the like fascists and Nazis that are in the military. No, no it's all the blacks that you can just pay off to do whatever you like. Fucking ridiculous. There are several advantages for us. Okay, he's still talking. Yeah. <laughs> First, it's easier for the blacks to swipe the stuff without getting caught. The political police aren't watching them as closely as they are the white service personnel. Yeah, famously black people aren't scrutinised <laughs> yeah, by the yeah, police anywhere near straight as much under as the as radar, them. didn't they? I mean, Jesus fucking <laughs> Christ. Okay, it's the same thing, it's the same thing every time. Their nightmare version of the future is just now, but with the racist flip. Yeah, That's it. yeah. It's always yeah. the same. It's always the same. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like how we have a big thing here about immigration mm -hmm. and this idea that, oh, they're all coming here as steel what's yeah, out. Yeah. And it's because, well, that's yeah. what the British because did everywhere else in the world, yeah, so it's the only way we can conceive it. Yeah. That kind of human interaction yeah, is us going yeah. to somebody else's country yeah. to dominate, yeah. to destroy, and so to just pillage. They couldn't possibly be coming here yeah, for, for any, any kind other reason. Good, kind hearted, yeah. good yeah. intention. No, yeah. it's not. Because we just cannot get our head around the idea that there is such a thing as a good intent yeah. because we've yeah. never had one yeah. yeah we've got this done really quick yeah it had to be though it's like pulling off a fucking plaster isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, you've got to yeah, just get it done especially it's like yeah. it's like eating shit right? you've got to just no don't think I, about yeah, it it's get exactly it down like as quickly that. as it's possible May 23, 1993. This is my last night in Dallas. I've been here two weeks now and I'd hoped to be heading back to Washington tomorrow, but orders came in this afternoon to go to Denver instead. It looks like I'll be doing approximately the same thing there I've been doing here, which is teaching. <laughs> That's one word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I have just finished conducting a crash course in the technology of sabotage for eight selected activists here, and I do mean Crash. This is the first free hour I've had since I arrived here when I wasn't too tired to think. I have taught the people here virtually everything I know that... I couldn't take <laughs> Fuck me. That could have only taken 10 minutes <laughs> the rest of the time. We started by learning how to build improvised detonators, timers, igniters, and other gadgets from scratch. This is going to be interesting, isn't mm. it? Then we studied the structure, properties, and performance characteristics of currently available military devices which can be adapted for various purposes. So, then we studied the way of the blade. <laughs> and the way we, Mr. Luther Pierce III. It's so funny because obviously, like, the time that he was born, if you think, like, obviously, the kind of language and a lot of the 
sort of yeah. imagery in a way. It's almost like you imagine like the pulp flash Gordon yeah, yeah, style yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like that's how I imagine like the, the, the illustrations looking. Which like in a way the equivalent of that today if he'd been born in like 1970 is he'd be like a fucking anime weeb. Like if he was born yeah, like, yeah. an anime weeb he'd be yeah, into like Gundams yeah. and shit. Yeah, yeah he'd, build, he'd build a mech yeah, and then yeah. destroy it in Washington with he'd a mech. Nuts, yeah. <laughs> You'd be Naruto running. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> After that, we examined a large number of hypothetical targets and worked out detailed plans for attacking them. We considered reservoirs, pipelines, fuel depots, rail lines, air terminals, and aircraft, telephone exchanges, oil refineries, power transmission lines, generating stations, highway interchanges, grain elevators, warehouses, and various types of machinery and other manufacturing equipment. <gasps> what? 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 Hmm? <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Where am I? <laughs> Fuck <those. laughs> Finally, we picked a real target and destroyed it. Dallas's Central Telephone Exchange. You could have just started with that, man. Actually, everything went extraordinarily well. My students all passed their final exams with flying colours. <laughs> of course they did. They had an amazing sense of Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I did everything possible to guarantee there would be no slip-ups. We spent three full days... I'm sorry, this guy. <laughs> this <laughs> guy made sure there would be no slip-ups. Is that what? Oh, what just you happened to you? That, yeah. You went to creep on an underage girl, <laughs> yeah. and that led to the police following you back to yeah. your hideout, yeah. which eventually led to you blowing yourself <laughs> up, at which point you were captured and tortured yeah. for months. For months. Yeah. And then only because someone else yeah. came and rescued you yeah. did you get. I get a real crash course. <laughs> <laughs> I've always loved you. We spent three full days preparing specifically for the telephone exchange. About 10 o'clock last night, we were parked in two automobiles on a dark side street, two blocks from the telephone exchange. I was wearing the uniform. Yeah, I bet you were. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what colour was this? <laughs> yeah, black. <I> know. <laughs> the detonating cord was unreeled and laced through two or three long banks of electronic panels on each floor. Then the demolition man took the five gallon can of napalm and sloshed its contents over large sections of the equipment. As our men came racing down the stairs to join me on the ground floor, three deafening explosions rocked the windowless building. A moment later, our fourth team came running up the stairs from the basement. We wasted no time in piling back into the truck. Just as we drove out of the parking lot, the satchel charge went off in the basement transformer vault with a roar, which caused a huge section of the brick facade on one side of the building to split off and topple into the street. The accounts of the operation in this afternoon's local newspaper indicated that two dozen or so employees who were in the building managed to get out safely, all except the guard I locked in the closet who died of smoke inhalation. I feel guilty about that, but it couldn't be helped. <laughs> we were in a hurry. <laughs> Do you mean it couldn't be I had somewhere to be. Yeah. I really need the piss. Oh yeah, no, I want these guys to be in charge of the yeah. world. Who's a heartless yeah. bastard. Yeah. Just, just soulless yeah. fucking creatures. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. I would, received... you go, would, you, would you want these guys? Or would you want a bunch of fucking racist lunatics in hoods and robes? <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a different group of racists. Oh. Wait, let me finish. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm not making myself clear. I mean a different... <laughs> <laughs> June 8. Received a note from Catherine today. It came enclosed in a box of equipment I had asked the organisation to have sent to me from the shop back home. She and the others have been working 70 to 80 hours a week in the shop. Printing money mostly, but also large quantities of propaganda leaflets. I do hope we get to read some of these wonderful leaflets. Oh yeah, that'd be great. I wonder um, how many times he'll admit to being a paedophile. <laughs> <laughs> She thinks I am still in Dallas, and she says she is hoping she will be ordered to make another cash delivery to Dallas soon so she can see me. How my heart aches to be with her again, even if only for a few hours. The fucking romance of the oh, yeah. 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 Oh, it's so stirring and moving. Oh. That's, that's the thing as well, it's like to have the, the sort of romance yeah. subplot. So of sort of it's, <laughs> yeah. I mean it's yeah, very bare bones, yeah, isn't it? It's a very generous yeah. 
But, um, but it's like, again, it's like you're a bunch of fucking like Nazi yeah. filth. You're incapable of love. That's yeah. why you are <laughs> yeah. what you are. Yeah, like, Honestly, I'm expecting at this point the only reason that this, any of this has happened is because she's going to mess up somehow and he's going to be the one tasked with whacking her and it's going to be like a lesson in and I did it because I ha you love yeah. you have to love the cause more than you love any dirty slut whore bitch and shoot her in the back of the head nine times and walk away and never think of her ever again and go back home to your many other child brides. <laughs> I, I would not be surprised at all if that is the only reason any of this has happened. I, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to say that I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Other than them having a kid mm. and the kid surviving beyond Earl dying heroically. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Suicide, she, if, if he's going to die at the end, which I... I assume, I assume he is. he's gonna, yeah. Um, He'll, uh, sorry, martyred. He'll oh, be martyred. Yes. Yeah. For the holy Hitlerian Christian. <laughs> but yeah, either, yeah, they'll have already had a kid or yeah. she'll be pregnant with yeah. his son and yeah, yeah. he'll die knowing that his yeah. bloodline yeah. will live race on will through his filthy little homunculus <laughs> child. Yeah. Either that or he's gonna cap her. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, she touched a black guy's hand as she took change from him in a shop <laughs> and so she's taken yeah. forever. Die. One of our members, a construction worker, was caught trying to sneak a few sticks of dynamite off the construction site where he was employed. Apparently he had been smuggling a dozen or so out in his lunchbox every day for quite a while. <laughs> That's a mistake you don't want to make. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's got a salami. Yeah. yeah. It's a spicy one. Yeah. The site guard turned him over to the local sheriff, who immediately searched the man's house and found not only a big cache of dynamite, but also several guns and some organisation literature. The sheriff figured he had stumbled onto something which could really give a boost to his career. Uh, uh, the, the, that's the only reason. Yeah, that's that, really no, 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 he stumbled upon a <laughs> fucking <laughs> terrorist, mate. Uh, yeah, like, I think even a fucking cop could put two and two together. <laughs> <laughs> if he could track the organisation in the Rocky Mountain area, the system would be very grateful to him. He would have a good chance of winning a seat in the state legislature, <laughs> perhaps even becoming lieutenant governor or being appointed to some other high post in the state government. <laughs> Where is this coming from? He's just imagining shit yeah. again. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> again, it's like, I'm no fan of the police yeah. and I think long-time followers of the channel yeah, will know that. Probably well. know that already. But like, Where is this, this fantasy like, coming yeah, from? Yeah, exactly. It's if like, he arrests a single yeah. Nazi, yeah. he'll become lieutenant yeah. governor and king of fucking New Mexico. Yeah. No, just because. It's, it's like, like, no, he's probably thinking, this guy's a fucking terrorist, I should probably yeah. do something to stop him. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. I would imagine that was his motivation. Yeah, fuck's yeah, sake. That's not how it works. Not now, not now that we've all been sissified. Oh, uh, of course. Uh, yeah. Judaism. But yeah. the, the Talmudic <laughs> hatred. <laughs> Etc. Et <laughs> <laughs> they gave him a vicious working over, but he wouldn't talk. Yeah, sure he wouldn't. Yeah. Sure he fucking yeah. wouldn't. So they stuck 17 rods <laughs> up his ass and sang like a fucking bird. <laughs> the outcome was that our man, in desperation, snatched a revolver from the holster of one of the deputies. He was shot dead by another deputy before he could pull the trigger. The wife was handed over to the FBI and flown back to Washington for interrogation. She should not be able to give them any significant information, but I shudder to think of the ordeal to which she is being submitted. No, you don't. You don't give a fuck. Like, look at the he's, shit. Look at the shit. This guy's no, no, no. He's he's shuddering all right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. If what we've read so far has taught me anything, oh, he's shuddering all right. The sheriff's glory was short-lived. However, the evening of the day our member was killed, the evening of the day, <laughs> the evening of the day our member was killed, the sheriff appeared in a televised news interview, boasting of the blow he had struck in the name of law, order, and equality, and pompously warning that he would treat with equal ruthlessness any other racist who fell into his hands. So I'm sure fucking Colorado sheriffs are all really yeah, anti-racist. They, they love equality and they love, to, they love to fight racism. Oh yeah. When he arrived home that night after his TV interview, he found his wife on his living room floor with her throat cut. Two days later, his patrol car was ambushed. His bullet riddled body was found in its burned out wreckage. Our retribution against the sheriff here should serve as a warning to the Jews' gentile henchmen, at least, that if they adopt the Jews' attitude towards our women and children, then they cannot expect their own families to be safe. So is it not you that's adopting that? Yep. I mean, like, obviously that isn't a Jewish 
Coin no, of it is like no. you're saying that's that it's like inherently Jewish. Yeah. So we have to do so, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you're, you're the only one. The whole so point far, here man. is like if we adopt Jewish modes of thinking and behaviour, yeah. then we become lesser as yeah. a race. That's what's led to this. You know, we used to be better, but now we're we're actually equal with all the yeah. lesser races and that. And now he's saying the only way to win is to do that, but on steroids. Is it? But would that not create exactly the world that the Jews want to create? <laughs> and then he's like. Sat there in his hooded robe, surrounded by candles, doing rituals. I don't know what you're getting at. I really don't know what you're getting at. <laughs> Are you fucking for real, man? God, Jesus Christ. On the other hand, it'll do these bumpkins around here a lot of good to get a full dose of Big Brother's loving care. Most of them hardly ever see a black or a Jew, and they act as if there's not a war going on. They seem to think that they're far enough away from things that are plaguing the other parts of the country that they can keep on with their same old routine. But it's always been that way with Boobus Americanus. This guy is such a... Fucking twat. Oh, this goofy ass motherfucker. So, how do you go from saying, like, yeah. genuinely some of the most disgusting yeah. shit we've yeah. ever had to say? Like, that's yeah. the, because it's not, we're not just reading it. Yeah. We're having to say this shit, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. people are going to hear us yeah. saying this yeah. shit. And then he cracks And then he out comes out with that. Yeah. 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 dad's joke. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, that's American or something. Yeah, you just know how funny he thinks yeah. he is as yeah. well. <laughs> Oh, what a freak. I got the Oscar fever. Hope you got it too. Woo! End of chapter. <laughs> I guess. He's getting real shoddy with this. Yeah, I think he's just getting tired. I think I honestly think he might he must have just written this all in one go. Yeah, it really feels I, like I think what it's it did. Like, at the beginning it's so loose yeah. and like yeah. unclear as to like the style, there's no dialogue no. or anything like that. No. And then it's like he starts adding different things as he's going yeah. as they pop into his head and then never goes back to ever like equal things out, yeah. you know what I mean? To be like, Oh, there's no dialogue until like mm. Two thirds of the way through, maybe I should sprinkle some in. Yeah, oh, there that. was certainly only one draft of this. Yeah. I think it's true for pretty much everything we've read on this yeah, channel. Yeah, but, definitely. Um, I, I, honestly, I'm not sure if there was even one draft. No, it's not. Really. <laughs> Somehow, I don't yeah. know if there was even one. To I, this I, I really do think that he just took a load of speed or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Because, like you said yeah. the other day, you know, he, he yeah. it's like the opening of it is kind of meandering. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, yeah, it, it becomes a lot more focused <laughs> yeah, as it starts coming yeah. up. And it, yeah, I, I, I honestly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think he wrote the whole thing in about 10 hours yeah, and it's just yeah, on speed the whole thing. single MDMA yeah. <laughs> June 27th, 1993. So I finally have my orders. It's to be California for me during our big summer offensive. He's on his like, summer break. <laughs> yeah. I'm to blow up some black people. It looks like I'll be in the thick of things there and that will be a welcome change from all this classroom work at least. I do like the way that it's like obviously he was like a teacher mm. and he made Earl tell this like yeah. electronics guy and this like working man to like yeah. as his like wish fulfillment but he's just gradually made yeah, him yeah. into a teacher yeah. because that's the only thing he like he, yeah. he's, <laughs> so he's just made him a teacher now yeah. he's just he's just become more and more just yeah he, he, yeah, like, he just, always he, yeah, was yeah. really which is just Mr. Pierce yeah we were told almost nothing except that I and four of the others are to be in Los Angeles by Wednesday night at the latest I protested immediately and vehemently all these people have been trained especially to attack specific targets in this area and they've been trained as teams. It doesn't make sense to break them up now and send some of them to California when they can be so much more effective here. If they are sent away, our whole program for the Rocky Mountain area will be jeopardized. The two DFC officers at the meeting assured me that their decision had not been made capriciously and that they are fully cognizant of the validity of my objections, but that more pressing considerations must prevail. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Any attempt for like character writing has just vanished yeah. and it's all just yeah. Pierce. It's just Mr. Pierce all the way down. Yeah. My impression is that everything we plan for this area is still go and it is still considered important for us to achieve our objectives here but the really critical theatre of operations will be the West Coast. So just go, I love the way he keeps doing that where he'll use like you know everything was go. Yeah. Like, Look bruv 
If he's going to talk that way, yeah. then just have him talk yeah. that way. Yeah. Don't keep putting it in quotation marks. Because yeah. it makes it yeah. seem like... like... He's uncomfortable. Yeah, it, that it, way. exactly. It, it... Yeah, and it, but it's like, it's you that's uncomfortable. Yeah. Really. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, you're supposed to be writing from a character's point of yeah. view. Yeah. But he kind of sometimes does, and yeah. sometimes doesn't. Yeah. And even when he does, it's the discomfort is... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, again, because he has the, the... They all do, you know, like you know, saying, Ted Cruz in his fucking plaid shirt yeah. and Tucker Carlson yeah. all of them yeah. fucks yeah. they want to look like they're the average Joe yeah. yet they also do not want to no, be that that's the last they, thing they, they want, want really you good. to see them that way yeah. but you know as soon as those cameras are off that shirt is fucking yeah. off and they're back in their tuxedo you know yeah. what I mean yeah. they want the associations mm. that come with dressing that way yeah I'm a big rugged yeah. mountain man yeah, I they... trap beaver pelts yeah. and, you know yeah. I mean, but they don't actually want anyone to treat them like no they want no. to be treated like fucking gods. Yeah, I'm Grizzly Adams, it's just that I have a valet and a fucking butler, you know <laughs> what I mean? And I'm a racist and also a <laughs> pedal. <laughs> oh god. It's like fucking night nurse. <laughs> 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 <Book form. laughs> Jesus Christ. The others will be by to pick me up in two hours. I think I'll take a quick nap now. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Vibes. <laughs> I can't help but keep thinking about, like, the little dickweed fucking Nazi boys who read this and were inspired by it. I just cannot get my head around what, what, uh, were they riveted to this stuff? You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I this mean, is amazing. Because I just don't believe it. I yeah, do not no, believe no. anyone could read this and, and be like, wow, this is brilliant. Yeah, gross. Yeah. It's yeah, so it's... poorly written, it's so amateurish, it's so clearly written by someone who is not a writer. Yeah. He doesn't know how to tell a story. There's he no story scene, beats. There's no he can't yeah. follow a plot, he can't establish characters, he can't develop characters. He gives you nothing no. you want from a book. The only thing he gives is racist jokes that they yeah. can titter at. Because yeah. you're not supposed to say that, but you said it. <laughs> oh, are you offended? Are you upset? Like that sort of shit. Yeah. And just wish fulfillment of, oh, wouldn't it be great to strangle a woman? Wouldn't it be great to shoot a black guy and just get away with it? That's all he's actually giving. That's all he's I giving. guess that's enough for these. And exactly, and that's yeah. more than enough. July 1st. Wow, are things tense here? <laughs> the others are dispersed to their assigned units, but I'm staying with the Los Angeles Northwest Field Command temporarily in a place called Canoga Park, about 20 miles northwest of Los Angeles proper. This evening, I finally buttonholed someone <laughs> and got... <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Why am I not surprised? <laughs> a simultaneous assault on more than 600 military and civilian targets all over the country has been scheduled for next Monday morning, July 4th. <laughs> God bless! <laughs> get a treasonous insurrection on, yeah. on Independence Day yeah. and they think they're the patriots. Yeah. Right? What we will do Monday is escalate the conflict to a new level and forestall the system's latest strategy for dealing with us. Beside that, however, the political police are continually tightening the screws. Despite our extraordinary security procedures, they will eventually succeed in penetrating the organisation. I think they already succeeded. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thinking back over the last two years, though, it's amazing that we've survived even until now. <laughs> yeah, that is true. true. Yeah, yeah. Fucking unbelievable, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Equal Opportunity and all those n****s in the FBI and in the Army for that. Fuck's sake. Just as you're about to fall asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah Just yeah, nicely yeah, drifting yeah, off. It wakes you up with one of those. Yeah, yeah. 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 All of this is going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm literally sitting here, like, yeah. trying yeah. not to fall Desperately asleep. Trying yeah. not to fall asleep. We had only the vaguest ideas about coping with this problem when we first went underground. Now we have a number of specialised units who do nothing but provide nearly foolproof false identities for our activists. Hasn't he already talked about that? He's talked about all of this. He's yeah. gone over all of this. He's just saying everything oh, twice, three times, four times. Oh. All of this is getting cut. <laughs> the future is always too uncertain. One can never be sure how a given situation will develop, and totally unexpected things are always happening. Things that no planner, however thorough, could have foreseen. Like a flare shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I am sure we will knock the hell out of the bastards Monday, and we will force the system into a state of total mobilization. But what then? We're throwing everything we've got into next week's offense and there is just no way we can keep up such a level of activity for more than a few days. So, Revolutionary Command must have something up its sleeve. 
Well, <laughs> that's what happens to you, do you know what I mean? That, that, that whole chapter was just fucking bollocks. It's just... Yeah. Well, I think the whole belaboured point there was he can't figure out what the next step is. Yeah. So I think he is the secret weapon. Because you remember he's saying, I don't know why I'm here. No one yeah, else seems to know yeah, either. Yeah. This, and I this can't figure it out. His mission, big yeah. suicide mission is going to be the thing that they're actually setting up here. So I'm guessing yeah. they've got a nuke. Yeah. It's got to be, surely. Los Angeles is getting nuked. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's got to be the dream of all yeah. of these. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> July 7, 1993. This is really a swanky place. <laughs> it's a penthouse apartment from which we can see most of Los Angeles, which is why we're using it as a command post. But the luxury is unbelievable. Satin sheets, genuine fur bedspreads, gold-plated bathroom fixtures, wall taps which dispense bourbon, scotch and vodka in every room, huge framed pornographic photographs on the walls. What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> the apartment belonged to one Jerry Siegelbaum, a business agent for the local municipal employees union and the star subject of the dirty photos on the walls. <laughs> Just pictures of his own arse. <laughs> Cock balls and arse on every wall. What the fuck? Typical union fucking yeah, I mean, for Christ's sake. What the- what, like, this man is a simpleton. Yeah. This man is a complete moron. Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest with you, over the last few pages I'm beginning to suspect much the same. <laughs> Looks like he preferred blonde gentile girls. Although his partner in one picture is a negress. And he's with a young boy in another. Oh, for fuck's sake. Some representative of the workers he was. Um coming from. Yeah. I hope someone moves him from the hallway outside soon. There's been no air conditioning since Monday and he's beginning to stink pretty bad. This huge city presents quite a different aspect now from the last time I had an overall view of it at night. The blaze of lights outlining all the main streets is gone. Instead, the general blackness is broken only by hundreds of fires randomly scattered through the city. I know there are thousands of vehicles moving down there, but they are driving without light so they won't be shot at. For the last four days, one has heard the practically continuous scream of sirens from police and emergency vehicles mixed with the sound of gunfire and explosions and the whirring clatter of helicopters. Tonight there is only the gunfire and not much of that. It looks like the battle here has reached a decisive stage. I mean, the fact that he just skips three or yeah. four days yeah. and just jumps over all of the important yeah. events yet again. Yep. <laughs> that, that's a running thing, isn't it, yeah. at this point? Yeah. Um, Nothing of interest is allowed to take place on screen. I still can't really get over the, the idea of these... Yeah, the, with the Jewish yeah. union leader, yeah. paedophile, yeah. who lives in luxury yeah. and like, opulence. Like, all the fucking boxes to Yeah, yeah and, and just, like, a luxury that, that doesn't even exist. Yeah, it's a comically insane yeah. luxury. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the idea that he has not only pornographic pictures of himself yes. on the walls... Yes, yeah. but he's abusing but, children in them. Yeah. Like, so child pornography yeah. openly displayed. Yeah, no, but you see, that's just how decadent our society has become and how emboldened these paedophiles are. You know, they'll just come out and say yeah. it. You know, in they'll even books. write it in books and admit it. They're so shameless. Yeah. At 2 o'clock Monday morning, more than 60 of our combat units struck simultaneously throughout the Los Angeles area, while hundreds of other units hit targets all across the country, from Canada to Mexico and from coast to coast. Our initial assault cut off all water and electrical power to the metropolitan area, knocked out the main airports, and made all the major freeways impassable. All of them. <laughs> all of that. Like, well, it's lucky we didn't get to see any Yeah, lucky we didn't get to see how yeah. that would be done. Yeah, lucky you didn't have to explain any of that. Yeah, so what a great how-to man. <laughs> I'm shocked that all of the people that followed it ended up fucking caned by fucking <laughs> grenades and burning up in their own fucking filth, banged up or yeah. fucking roasted on a spit. <laughs> the harbour area has been almost a solid mass of flames for four days now. We seized at least 15 police stations and are using them as local command posts. In many areas, our teams were able to go about their work practically without interference. How very convenient. <laughs> the whole key to neutralizing the police and to 
everything else for that matter, was our work inside the military. We could see and hear jet fighters, bombers, swooping low over the city, but they were not attacking us. They were strafing and bombing the dozen or so California National Guard armories in the metropolitan area. Later, we saw several dogfights in the sky over Los Angeles and heard that Camp Pendleton, the big Marine Corps base about 70 miles southeast of here, was being hit by heavy bombers from Edwards Air Force Base. But Monday evening, quite by chance, I ran into Henry of all people, and he explained quite a bit of the military situation to me. Good old Henry. How glad I was to see him oh again. Oh my god. We met in the KNX transmitter building, where I was helping our broadcast team get the station back on the air after we seized it. That, by the way, is what I've been doing for four days. Repairing shot-up transmitters, shifting transmitter frequencies, and improvising equipment. And here was me thinking something interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, the military just effortlessly win all the fights for them, and then he's just tinkering with fucking yeah. transmitters again. Henry came roaring up to KNX in a jeep, wearing a US Army uniform with colonel's insignia, and accompanied by three soldiers carrying machine guns and anti-tank rockets. Henry, it turned out, has been in charge of the organization's entire recruiting effort in the armed forces for over a year. The story he told me was a long one. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> military units commanded by pro-organization officers began disarming all black military personnel as soon as we launched our Monday morning attack. The excuse they used was that black militants had launched a mutiny in other units, and that their orders from higher up were to disarm all blacks to prevent the spread of mutiny. Generally, white servicemen were ready and willing to believe that story, and did not need to be told twice to turn their guns against the blacks in their units. That I can believe. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, 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 I believe. I can yeah. Believe it. I also love as well the fact that it's like in his worldview, like as of now, there are white people there are Jewish people, and there are black people. Yeah. And that's it. There are no Everyone other else ethnic like groups. This. We have turned one of our transmitters into a phony soul station, and have been broadcasting a call for a black revolution, telling the blacks to shoot their white officers and non-coms before the whites can disarm them. It's like literally a false flag yeah. like attack that they accuse yeah. everybody else of doing. If the nightmare scenario you claim is imminent doesn't materialise, then make it happen yourself yeah, exactly. and blame yeah, everyone else yeah. for it. From the beginning, the LA cops have been our only really organised opposition. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure yeah, the cops in LA would yeah, 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 they they definitely fight stand, tooth yeah. and nail against a fascist uprising. Jesus Christ. If the LA cops had been able to link up with any military units remaining loyal to the system, that would have been the end of us. Fortunately, a dozen old M60s from a unit which had come over to us got to them first. They rolled right over the roadblocks the police had set up around their head quarters, riddled the building with HE and incendiary shells, <laughs> and liberally sprayed the hundreds of police vehicles in the area with machine gun fire. They had to evacuate the building, and we rained 81mm mortar fire down on the surrounding parking lots and streets until the area became untenable for them. Most of the cops seemed to have made their way to their homes and changed into civilian clothes. Like, I do just say as well, like, the same people that want to do this are the very people that when Black Lives Matter protesters yep. burn a car or break yeah. a window, yeah, as if civil civilization yeah. is falling yeah. and everything needs to be overturned to crush these hideous rebels. Yeah. This is actually what their goal is. This yeah. is their fantasy. This yeah. is their plan. July 10. Well, well, well. Things have really been happening. Some good and some bad things, but mostly good so far. So this is why he decided to make it a diary. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 So, so he can skip, skip over. over all the yeah. He doesn't actually yeah. have to describe any of time describing anything. It's all just, oh, guess what? Oh, you'll never, you're never guess what's happening. You're never going to believe how exciting <laughs> yesterday was. Let me describe it for you in painstaking <laughs> and boring detail. <laughs> the order is out now to shoot on sight anyone carrying arms unless he is wearing one of our armbands. Oh, God. That's a welcome switch from a few days ago when we were the ones liable to be shot on sight. After years of hiding, slinking around in disguises, and getting sick with fear every time we saw a cop, it's a wonderful feeling to be out in the open and to be the ones with the guns. There was remarkably little crime or violence, except in the black areas, oh, where rioting, looting, and burning began early Monday afternoon and grew progressively more intense and widespread. Um, I'm sorry. There was very remarkably little crime or violence. Yep. All of this you? is being done by white people. All of this is a crime. Mm -hmm. 
A violent, violent yeah, crime. All of this is treason, done by in fact. Yeah. It's treason that you're committing. Yeah. By early Thursday, however, there was a good bit of looting in white areas as well. <gasps> mostly of grocery stores. Some people had not eaten for more than 48 hours by then and were acting from desperation rather than lawlessness. Oh, that's good. See, that's the difference between it's white like, looting and black looting. Yeah, yeah. Whites only do it when they absolutely have to, yeah. whereas the blacks, they just, you know. Yeah. White people only do it to improve their material conditions because of the deprivation and poverty that they suddenly find themselves placed in by white society <laughs> mistreating them and destroying large parts of the city they live in. Um, unlike black people, for example, who, you know, obviously have it much worse than that mm. all of the time. <laughs> it's like, the fact that it's again, he describes a situation in which white government, essentially, a violent, repressive, armed, racist, white government imposes violence and deprivation on the population of the city and then says and when situations like that get so bad sometimes through desperation you have to resort to criminality yeah. in order just to survive but that goes completely yeah. over his head no only white people get that exemption it's like schlicked it all over again where he's just <laughs> describing exactly the way things are <laughs> acting like it's this hellish fucking nightmare mm. vision it's like he's doing a similar well, thing worried, here, worried, but he's like actually just like describing the reasons why poor people commit crimes but completely no no exemptions for yeah. black people only well, for white people yeah oh yeah you know, what was it like you know feeling sick when you see police speak from fear you know yeah, yeah. you can't talk about these things yeah. and just completely yeah. ignore that entire portion of the population exactly especially like, when he's the one racializing yeah, it exactly exactly like, you want it to be yeah. about race and then you yeah. ignore all the ill treatment that black like, people are on the yeah. And, and again, especially when it's like he wants a society. I mean, obviously, I'm assuming he wanted a society that didn't yeah, have exactly. any non white people. Exactly. But you want non white people to be violently oppressed. Well, they are. Yeah, exactly. So, what the fuck are you complaining yeah. about? And then he blames oh. their reaction on their genetics rather than the yeah. conditions that they're forced into. But when it's white people, yeah. oh, you can't blame them for committing crimes because it's the conditions mm. that made the crime happen. Yeah. And it's like, so you see, you can do the math. Yeah. Just like yeah. all of them, yeah. they can all work it out, but yeah. they choose yeah. not to for certain people. Now, however, we are the ones with the job of restoring order, and it's going to be a bitch. The people are absolutely out of their minds with fear and panic. They are behaving in an entirely irrational manner, and a great number of lives are bound to be sacrificed before we get things under control. <laughs> irrational. There's bombers <laughs> strafing the streets. Jet fighters dropping fucking munitions on fucking police stations. <laughs> Roving bands yeah. of Nazis and military <laughs> personnel shooting on sight. These people, they, they're irrationally fearful and pan What fools they are. We're gonna have to kill a whole bunch yeah, more of yeah. them to get them under control. Today I went out with a fuel recovery team and got a close look at our civilian problem. It really shook me. We were driving a big gasoline tank truck with an armed jeep escort from filling station to filling station in the Pasadena area, pumping the gasoline out of each station's tanks and into our truck. <laughs> it's just fucking fuel. Fury Road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Morton Joe is about to come out. It's, it's Fury Road, but Morton Joe is the hero. Yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. Pasadena used to be mostly white a few years ago. <laughs> Pasadena used to be mostly white. Was it anything before that, Mr. Fierce? <laughs> Pasadena. It's strange, it doesn't sound very white. Does it? <laughs> Pasadena used to be mostly white God a few sake. years ago, but it has become substantially black now. <laughs> Substantially, substantially black. black. It's a damn good thing they have no firearms, or we'd be in a hell of a jam now. Thank you, Senator Cohen. That's the trouble with this, is that every time it comes your time to read, you're like, oh god, what horrific yeah. shit am I gonna, have, I to gonna have to say in public now? Yeah. July 11, 1993. Last night I found out why Washington hasn't tried to send troops in here from other parts of the country. It's because we've got Vanderburg AFB and all the missile silos there. <laughs> Here we go. The trash can, man. <laughs> Any military move against us would result in our launching nuclear missiles targeted on New York City and Tel Aviv. So I just want to say like, a couple of things. I think it's really funny, like we had all these kind of ideas. It's like, oh, well, of course, he's the secret weapon and the nuke would have something to do with him. No, nope, not at all. They just effortlessly take yeah. a fucking yeah. nuclear missile silo and now that will be how the nukes get launched. Yeah. Like we already know Washington gets yeah. nuked, so I'm guessing Tel Aviv's going to get fucking... A 
of course. Israel. Yeah, 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 of but one thing I kind of just realised is we talked about People's Republic and the many parallels with that. Mm. I just realised we are getting an inverse People's Republic in which oh, the yeah, two coasts yeah, are yeah, conceived yeah, yeah. by the Nazis. Holy shit, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and it's every bit as like slapdash yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. as the whole Rios Parkinson bit where they just win oh, everything really and take the game. Yeah, Schlichter definitely just basically oh, read yeah, this. I think he actually did. Yeah, I think he actually might have read this and said, I could do that then. Yeah. Which, to be fair, is a reasonable thought to have while yes, reading it a piece is. of shit like yeah. that. And yet he somehow managed not to, to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. He certainly didn't do it any worse. No, but he absolutely didn't do it any worse. <laughs> What a fucking chip. <laughs> the Sierras and the Mojave Desert form a natural eastern boundary to our territory. <laughs> We're getting all new Vegas yeah, and yeah. like <laughs> In some of the worst areas of civilian rioting, primarily because of the disruption of food supplies, the government is using special military units made up of non-whites only. They've rushed some of... Oh. They've rushed some of these all units into the border area around our California enclave. The closest such unit seems to be in Barstow, about 100 miles northwest of here. Flashbacks. Yeah. Flashback yeah. after flashback yeah, yeah. to fucking peaceful republic right now. I hate to hear of such things happening to white people, mm. but the reaction can only be favourable to us. Mm. And it's good that we force the system to show its lack of confidence in the loyalty of the white population and its dependence on non white elements. Yeah, just say you're enjoying it. Just say you enjoy it. Just say you like that this yeah. is what's happening. Just say it. It's fine. We all know. We can all see the big fucking bulge in the front of the trousers <laughs> Mr. Beard. We have altogether about 40,000 armed forces personnel at our disposal. Henry, whom I saw again briefly last night, seems to think we've got a pretty good grip on them. <laughs> I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> that was something I forgot to mention as well. Henry just turned up dressed as a colonel. Yeah. Like, yeah, he did. What yeah. was that about? Like, <laughs> He's a colonel yeah. now? Do you think he's about to become the like Mussolini style dictator of their like great fucking revolution? <laughs> he just dresses in stolen military medals from now on. <laughs> what, what the fuck was that all about? No mention made of why yeah. he's dressing as a colonel now. <laughs> he's just gone completely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of his eyes is like rolled to one yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Dragging his leg, and he's like... He's got you? shrunken heads attached yeah, to his yeah. fucking he keeps, belt. Uh, he keeps saying he holds regular conversations with the Virgin Mary, <laughs> with no one else being in the room with him. <laughs> The official system line at the moment is the situation is well under control and the racist gangsters in California, brackets, that's us, will soon yeah, be... We know. Yeah. <laughs> we know. Honestly, I wouldn't call you gangsters because that yeah. does imply a certain degree of organisation, doesn't yeah, it? You're, yeah. I, I'd, I'd call you... what? What would you call them? Cunts? N nonces. 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 Racist I'd nonces. Call them nonces yeah. yeah. Since we have been broadcasting appeals to revolt aimed at their troops day and night and have also been giving a picture of the situation here much rosier than it actually is. The system's story sounds pretty hollow. So like the fact that he's just openly saying it's like there's no heroism in this revolution. It's just, and I, I get that this is a how-to thing, all right? Yeah, yeah. Fine. But like, that's why I keep saying, it's like, if you're gonna write a, a how-to manual, just do that. Yeah. Just do that. Well, I think like, yeah, what he's saying is, is you're not gonna feel like you're a hero when you're doing this. Yeah. Because they're not. Yeah, because they're not heroes, are they? Because they're not so heroes. They're just, so we're, we're just them. lying about it, we're yeah. lying. We constantly lie, we cheat, yeah. we, we steal, we, we murder, yeah. we're, we're scum. Yeah, we provoke a reaction from black people by murdering them. Mm. And then claim that that's in their nature, yeah. even though it's actually us that did that and that caused that. Yeah. And while we're trying to destroy the country and while we're plunging the yeah. populace into the scarcity and ages. chaos, yeah, we blame the black people for having a predisposition to causing all of this stuff we just caused. You'll probably be very upset and depressed while you're doing this. Yeah. Don't worry. Once I'm in charge, I'll be very happy. Yeah. So that will make up for all you cunts being miserable and dead. The really nasty business is what we're running into in the black and racially mixed areas, though. Oh, yeah. 
I yeah. can't wait to hear this. I've spent the last two days directing salvage crews in areas which the troops have just finished clearing. The job of the troops is to separate the blacks from the rest of the population and confine them in controlled access areas until they can be convoyed out of our enclave. At first, groups of blacks tried to stand their ground and defy the troops, apparently under the impression that the honkies wouldn't actually shoot them. Note to the reader, honky was one of the many derogatory slang terms referring to a white person which was used by Negroes in the three decades prior to the Great Revolution. Its origin is uncertain. It's nice that he didn't feel the need to let anybody know what any of his own yeah. slurs mean. Yeah. There was no authors yeah. no. I guess apparently in the future they're still regularly used. Once again, it's a damn good thing the civilian population was disarmed by the system years ago. If more blacks had guns, there'd be no way we could deal with them, considering the disparity in numbers. Like, so again, the fact is like, if we open this book with this big fucking yep. phony piss and wine yep. session about how they took my guns from me, how dare they, the Cohen Act, and the black deputies with knives in their belts, and now he's just like, um, we should disarm everyone mm -hmm. first, just to, just to let you know. You, you'll probably need to disarm them all first. So that'll be us doing that, yeah. not them. That was bollocks yeah. before. The blacks have pretty well cleaned out all the food in their areas, and they've mindlessly destroyed a lot of other things we're looking for. Although we are fine... What, Is that mindless? Mindless to eat food? Mindlessly destroying uh, yeah. the things we're looking for? By which you mean yeah. they've destroyed the things their enemy yeah. is hoping to use against them? Mindless. How is that mindless? Yeah, no, it was completely accidental that they yeah. took all the food that they need and left yeah. little for us to use yeah. against them. No, no, it was it must have been an accident they did all those clever things because it couldn't possibly have been deliberate. Anyway, let me tell you about the time I blew myself up and got a rod <laughs> up my fucking ass. <laughs> we also found gruesome evidence of one way in which the blacks have solved their food shortage. Oh my god, oh my god, this is just... Fucking ridiculous. This guy is such a fucking clown, I swear <laughs> to God. Cannibalism. <laughs> they began by setting up barricades in one main street to stop cars driven by whites, apparently as early as Tuesday of last week. The unfortunate whites were dragged from their cars, taken into a nearby black restaurant, Butchered. But the minute they took them to a restaurant, yeah. they're, not, they're not completely barbaric. Yeah. They took them to a restaurant and prepared them properly. What the fuck is this? Taken into a nearby black restaurant, butchered, cooked, and eaten. Later, the blacks organised hunting parties and made raids into white areas. In the cellar of one black apartment building, we found a scene of indescribable horror attesting to the success of these raids. Yeah. Indescribable horror. You've just been describing absolute horror yeah. for this entire book. Yeah. But suddenly this racist bullshit he's made up is just beyond the pale. All this fucking gruesome, disgusting shit he's done was brilliant yeah. and needed to be described yeah, exactly. in yeah, 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 yeah. detail. Yeah. But this, oh, oh. now he's letting the sociopaths in his audience know when to pretend to be upset by violence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I and a crew of my men noticed a commotion in front of the building as we finished checking the looted shambles of an adjacent warehouse and came out onto the street. A group of GIs milling around the entrance were obviously distressed about something. One of them came running out of the apartment building and began retching and vomiting on the sidewalk. Then another, with a grim expression on his face, led a young white girl out of the building. She was about 10 years old, naked, filthy, and in an obvious state of shock. As soon as I pushed my way into the building, I recoiled from the horrible stench which permeated the place. Putting a handkerchief over my nose and mouth didn't seem to help, but with the aid of my flashlight, I descended the cellar stairs past two more GIs who were coming up. In the arms of one of them was a silently staring white child of about four, alive but apparently too weak to walk. The cellar, which was illuminated by two kerosene lanterns hanging from steam pipes, had been converted into a huge human slaughterhouse by the blacks in the apartment building. This is one of the most utterly unhinged, insane fucking things I've ever heard. Yeah. The floor was slippery with half-congealed blood, there were washtubs full of stinking entrails and others filled with severed heads. 
Four tiny human haunches dangled overhead from wires. On a wooden workbench beneath one of the lanterns, I saw the most terrible thing I have ever seen. It was the butchered and partially dismembered body of a teenaged girl. Her blue eyes stared emptily at the ceiling and her long golden hair was matted with the blood which had rushed from the gaping wound in her throat. So it's all right when you cut people's throats and yeah. murder teenage girls. Yeah. You can murder like, as many is, teenage yeah, this girls is as you want. A you are he himself yeah. as fucking yeah. murdered young teenage yeah. white girls. This is ridiculous. Yeah. This is fucking insane. I retched and stumbled back up the stairs and out into the light again. I could not make myself go back into that awful cellar, but I sent two of my crew with cameras and lights down there to make a thorough photographic record. The photos will be useful for troop indoctrination. Oh, well, every cloud, eh? <laughs> <laughs> From one of the GIs outside the building, I learned that parts of at least 30 children, all white, had been found in the cellar along with the two who were still alive. In the rear courtyard of the building was an improvised barbecue grill and a large pile of small human bones thoroughly gnawed. No cases of cannibalism by whites or Chicanos have been reported. The blacks are a race apart in this respect, but there's been a lot of killing in fights over food. And this is a guy who refuses to go anywhere near the Holocaust. Yeah, 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 yeah. The poor German yeah. soldiers being tortured yeah. by the Israelis and the lies they spread about them. Anyway, uh, black, black people, if they get hungry for longer than 10 minutes, eat 30 children in an afternoon. That's true, and don't look it up because, I, because it's definitely true. Here's a scene I made up in which it happens. What an absolute maniac. I mean, that, that puts Schlick to the shame. Yeah, it does. Like, that's yeah, the worst, really, yeah. like, yeah. fantasy bullshit we've had yeah. so far. The scene itself is obviously just horrific. In any other context, you know, yeah, that's horrific. Course, yeah. But the racial... The fact that it's in service of yeah. pure fantasy racism. Yeah. It's just I, like, oh, I'm glad you found a way to yeah. make a child being cannibalised somehow worse. Yeah. You fucking cunt. You're just gonna make shit up like that using the imagery that we yeah. associate with like World War II. Yes. Of like cannibalism yeah. in war-torn Russia and things like that as the Nazis roll yeah. through fucking killing everyone in sight. The imagery you get of like concentration camp survivors, you know, milling by barbed wire fences, completely <laughs> emaciated. Piles of corpses. Not a fucking word no. about the Holocaust. Nothing. No explanation given for that. Not even a milk toast little Nazi boy defense of no. that. No, he just doesn't want to go anywhere near it. But this absolute fantasy, this is the justification yeah. for why we should genocide everyone who isn't white. And let's be honest, most white yeah. people as well. It's pathetic. It's fucking pathetic. <sighs> I don't like this book. <laughs> And there have been some grisly atrocities where gangs of blacks have invaded white areas. Uh, isn't that what has just happened, but yeah. in reverse? Yeah. I, I, That's literally what he's currently doing. Yeah. <laughs> On the positive side, in some of the predominantly white middle class and working class neighbourhoods, whites have banded together to protect themselves from incursions by blacks and Chicanos. Oh, well, he, had to, he had to have a yeah, him to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let, now they're in his mind. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't let anyone think that he was actually okay with them. Like, no, no, no. Most of all, though, many of them seem to be convinced that any effort at self-defence would be racist and they fear being thought of as racists or thinking of themselves that way more than they fear death yeah yeah they just allow themselves to be eaten alive because they wouldn't want to be called a racist this is so yeah. this is the same shit we yeah. get from all of them. yeah yeah well <laughs> the, same the fact shit we get from all of the them. fact we've just gone from what we've just yeah. read yeah. one of the most sickening examples yeah. of racism in the books yeah. Made. yeah now we're just immediately back to the common or garden yeah. everyday racism yeah. that's just, just stupid, stupid bullshit. Yeah. it's just jesus fucking christ yeah i'm really not enjoying this chapter. even when gangs of blacks took their 
children away or raped their women before their eyes, they offered no significant resistance. Really sick. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yes, you fucking are. The fact that it never crosses his mind that he's inventing all yeah. of this yeah. <laughs> it seems to have never occurred to him that none of this is real. Yeah. None of it has happened. None of it is going to happen. And it exists solely within his putrid mind. And he's just like, these sick bastards. Yeah. What goes through their heads? <laughs> That's how we all feel about yeah. you, Mr. Pierce. Christ. I think we might need something stronger than whiskey. <laughs> Fucking petrol or something. <laughs> yeah, drain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard for me to feel sorry for whites who won't even try to protect themselves. And it's even harder for me to understand why we should take chances and knock ourselves out to save such brainwashed scum from the fate they richly deserve. That's just schlicked all over right there. Yes, it is, yeah. Just the actual, he just admits yeah. it out loud. Are the people who are actually way more victims by any of this than I have ever mm -hmm. been. I fucking hate them and all fuck yeah. them. Let them die. Yeah. Fuck them cunts. Like no sympathy, no compassion, no humanity. And again, like, this is what we've said before, like how, you know, they will never confront the realities of how are you going to do this? Yeah. But like, he's now doing it and just yeah. admitting that it's like, yeah, it's basically impossible. Yeah. So I guarantee you, in a, in a couple of pages, he'll be like, yeah, we just killed them all. We just killed them all. Because right. they, they made it so difficult for us. We wanted yeah. Yeah. to just merely separate them at gunpoint, yeah. at bayonet point, but they wouldn't have it. Yeah. So when we finished starving most of them to death, we, uh, we shot the rest of them. And in a minute he'll be like, and then we got so hungry, you know, we had to actually resort to cannibalism yeah, yeah. a few times, but yeah. it was okay. We had to eat their minute. children. Yeah, but that's okay. Anyway. <laughs> we made sure to eat the white children though, because we thought yeah. the black ones probably wouldn't taste as good. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd be shocked if it took a couple of pages for that yeah. to happen. <laughs> a couple of paragraphs. It's about to happen. Yeah, and he's mid-sentence already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In some neighbourhoods, we're meeting so much opposition that it's nearly impossible to achieve our goal of separating the various racial groups into enclaves. Another big problem in trying to achieve racial separation is that so many people in this area cannot easily be classified as white or non-white. Nevertheless, we've got to draw the line somewhere and soon. No. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Yeah. You, the problem is entirely yours, yeah. Mr. Pierce. Well, it's it's entirely you. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah it's not just your, your problem. problem. You are, you are the, problem. the problem, yeah. Well, not anymore, you right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cunt. There is no way we can feed everybody in our area, and if we're to avoid mass starvation among the whites, we must separate them into clearly defined areas soon, and we must move everyone else out of our area one way or another. I wonder what he means by mm -hmm. that. I'll be shocked if this turns violent. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, isn't it? Because, like, this is a, a... It's kind of a rhetorical thing. When people say, Oh, no, I don't want to, yeah. like, kill all the Muslims. Yeah, I just, just, I just want to get be rid of them. elsewhere yeah. to and, places and, they don't want to be. And so you say, well, what if they don't want to go? And what if I don't want to and, let yeah, you do that? Exactly. Then what? Then what? Because they never have any intention of actually peacefully Yep. moving anyone anywhere else. We'll burn yep. that bridge when we come to yep. it. Actually, we have done pretty well at concentrating the blacks. About 80% of them are sealed in four small enclaves now. And I understand the first mass convoy of them is heading east tonight. Like, this is literally just the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. Putting them into ghettos and then slowly bussing them out and putting them on trains and shit. In a way, like, it's kind of makes sense that he's not bringing up the Holocaust yeah. much. Because it's like, he's far less interested in denying the Holocaust or justifying the Holocaust than as in, for yeah, it. advocating for a new Holocaust. That's his actual goal here. Well, I'm hoping that this chapter is going to be a bit less. Yeah, I mean, you, like, I'd like to say it can't be worse than the last one, but, but it, it, let's face it, it, it can. definitely could be. July 19th, 1993. For the past five days, I've been witnessing what surely must be one of the biggest mass migrations in history. The evacuation of the blacks and mestizos and boat people from Southern California. I do just wonder, it seems like maybe we're not going to go quite so far into the future as we thought, like, in within the story. Although, I, I'm guessing there's going to be some kind of epilogue where we see, you know, the glorious, wonderful, perfect, utopian vision. I was just wondering, like, do you think, like, the minute that the last black person steps out of Los Angeles, the sun will shine forever and the birds will come out and sing and all white people will suddenly just realise, oh, it's like a weight off my 
chest and everything goes perfect. All the fires immediately go out. <laughs> Bullets uh, stop being fatal. Like everything suddenly fixes itself. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. Of, yeah, I'm waiting for that scene now. I have been surprised to see how callous our volunteer blacks are towards their own people. Some of the older blacks who haven't been able to fend for themselves are obviously near the point of death from starvation and dehydration. Yet our volunteers handle them so roughly and pack them so tightly into the cars that it makes me flinch to watch them. Well, you know what, Earl? There was a very easy way for you yeah. to avoid all of this. <laughs> I'm really shocked at how carelessly the blacks treat their own. This slut whore. Yeah, I'm yeah. Shooting repeatedly yeah. to death. Bash their fucking brains in. This endless repetition. Yeah. Of, you have to kill white people too, yeah. because fuck them yeah. also. Fuck them too. Kill them too. <gasps> I'm shocked and appalled yeah. at the violence. When one overloaded Cadillac started onto the eastbound freeway with a lurch this morning, an ancient negro lost his grip and fell off the roof, landing head first on the pavement and crushing his skull like an egg. The blacks who had just loaded the car roared with laughter. It was apparently the funniest thing they've seen in a long time. Yeah, this isn't really much better than the last one. No, chapter, is it? no, it's kind of sticking with the theme, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. What we've accomplished so far is really quite remarkable. We've moved out approximately half a million non-whites who couldn't possibly have made it on foot. Each and every one of these is now the responsibility of the system to feed and house and clothe and keep out of trouble. So yeah, they're, they're not actually just murdering them. Well, the ones who survived the trip, they're not murdering. Yeah. Not yet. They're weaponizing them. That's yeah. It. It's exactly the sort of issue that we had with People's Republic, where it's like reading between the lines, what you could tell is obviously that the People's Republic, the red states mm. in the middle, they turfed out all of the undesirable they got rid of everybody they didn't want mm. stuffed them in these overcrowded coastal regions yeah. he's just admitting that that's what they're doing yeah. but what they're actually doing is trying to overburden the system like he says now they have to feed them all they'll have to so then it will just weaken the system yeah. then they'll take the rest of the country and, and then, then they'll, they'll just murder them yeah. them well, it's funny you should say that actually <laughs> This whole evacuation amounts to a new form of warfare, <laughs> demographic war. The sight of that huge flowing swarm of non-whites left me with an overwhelming feeling of relief that it was moving away from us, out of our area. Uh, again, the use of the word swarm, yeah. which is something that our prime ministers yeah. Constantly yeah. used cabinet day. ministers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What a companion piece these two books have turned yeah. out to be. Yeah. Not only is Kurt Schlichter a terrible writer and a weird filth fetishist. Yeah. He's also a fucking plagiarist yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> plagiarizes Nazis. Who would have ever expected that of Colonel Kurt Schlichter? <laughs> <laughs> Never saw that one. <laughs> Again, because the whole thing is a, is a dog whistle, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, sort of. Yeah. It's a whistle. <laughs> yeah, it's a bullhorn. Yeah. <laughs> with a funny German accent. Yeah. <laughs> he read this book yeah. and then just ripped and, it off. And did basically like a kind of fan fiction. Yeah. He took that and added Jack Reacher to it. Yeah. He just ripped off two different things. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So People's Republic turns out is even more pathetic than we <laughs> gave it credit for. So yeah. we might have to jump in and read some more then and see see how far this rabbit hole goes. <laughs> July twenty four. Boy, I'm really becoming a jack of all trades. <laughs> Gee whiz. <laughs> We still don't have order, but now we're bringing almost enough food into the metropolitan area to keep the people from starving. That sounds like a paradise. God, they're almost not starving. Yeah. <laughs> you can see why they're flooding yeah. over in their thousands. How proud to be. Yeah. <laughs> we're <I'm> almost <laughs> not starving. <laughs> I got some insight into how we're managing that during the Santa Barbara trip. In the countryside, I passed literally hundreds of organised groups of white youngsters, some working in the orchards and fruit groves, others marching along the road singing with fruit baskets slung across <laughs> their shoulders. Exactly what you said. And yeah. the birds were yeah. singing yeah. and alighting on people's hands and letting them struggle. And the lion laid down with the lamb. <laughs> we're in the fucking big rock candy. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> One evening as the sun went down and the jungle fire was burning, down the track came a hobo hiking And he said, boys, I'm not turning I'm headed for a land that's far away Beside the crystal fountains So come with me, we'll go and see The big rock candy mountains In the big rock candy mountains There's a land that's fair and bright 
Where the handouts grow on bushes And you sleep out every night Where the boxcars all are empty And the sun shines every day On the birds and the bees and the cigarette trees The lemonade springs where the bluebird sings In the bleak rock candy mountains In the big rock candy mountains All the cops have wooden legs And the bulldogs all have rubber teeth and the hens lay soft boiled eggs. That's the big takeaway. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's just strictly the scientific rigor yeah. to which Mr. Pierce applies <laughs> uh, to all he, things. He is strictly a paedophile of science. <laughs> yeah, a nonce of science. <laughs>